Hello friends, Tanya here with another video for Spellbinders. This time I am playing with the July 2021 Amazing Paper Grace or AP APG and it is the pop-up 3D vignette Home Sweet Home. Now if you make it according to the directions on the back of your packaging, you will end up with a house that is a pop-up card that will fold down into a standard envelope for an A2 card. And you will be able to have little note cards that pull out the top. Here are several of the pieces in the kit. There are an amazing number of details and special attention to things like the shingles on the roof and the windows in the door. And here we have the actual windows which you can cut two little rectangles out at the same time and then you can stick these pieces in and create the framing for some window panes. And then we have some little details for above the window or the door, a little window box, some little detail like um, for wood framing and these darling little flowers and leaves and a chimney. Can you believe there's a chimney? Some extra brick texture detail you can add that embosses. I believe there are two in the kit. I can't find one of mine. This is a tab. It folds over. And this is the part that can be either the base for the card or the tab that goes inside, the note, note tab that goes inside. Here we have an outline detail or a shadow detail for the um, A-frame part and the details that you can cut out and add to that, plus some trim for the roof. This little tiny piece here is actually for the top of the chimney. I think they've thought of all of the little details. We even have a couple pieces left. This is the mechanism for the pop-up portion and these are the little bridge pieces that fit into the slots. Now if you put those upside down, they'll hold the note cards. And these are some dies that cut out words and you can use those to create some banners and they happen to fit in those bridge pieces. So clever. I love that they used all of the space available. Today I am going with a bit of a Caribbean feel. I'm just really missing vacation and this color scheme reminds me of the homes that I saw in old San Juan when we visited there. So it really has a Caribbean vibe for me. I'm going to show you how I assemble one of these little houses and we're just using the peaked part, not the low, the long part. And we're going to make those into houses. So I used a purple paper and some white for the roof because white is uh, frequently used as a trim on the Caribbean homes that I saw. And they all have these bright, cheerful, beautiful colors. I, I really loved that when I went to San Juan and walked the streets there. It just is so refreshing from the grays and, and whites and those kinds of colors that you typically see here where I live. So we're going to add that peak to the top. You just layer those pieces and that's where this Barely Arts Precision Glue really comes in handy. I'm centering this piece on the front of the house. And I don't know if I showed you earlier, but one of the pieces is actually a little tiny die cut that will cut out the doorknob. I'm telling you, there are so many amazing little details included in this die kit. Die kit. Now I'm using a white door that I cut out so I can get the windows. I would like those in the door. I don't want the purple to show through. So I'm just going to adhere those. I'm using my reverse tweezers from Spellbinders. Love those things to help get those in the right spot. And I did cut out three windows uh, for this particular house. Um, I do change the colors uh, and the amount of details that I end up using on the finished product. But all you do is you take the white background or yellow or whatever you decide to use and die cut that out and then you 
stick the window pane additions in and die cut those and then adhere them together. You can see I did not get mine completely centered in there and I did improve that later, but it's really a small detail and I'm not going to tell if you don't tell. Here you see me using my pokey tool to get some of the little crumbs. You know how when you use a heavier cardstock, you get some little um, crumbs of paper sticking to the edges. And I just used my pokey tool to get rid of those. That's a quick tip. And then, of course, I'm always brushing those little crumbs away so they don't get glued into my project. I'm going to adhere these one on each side of the door. And you can put as many or as few windows on these as you would like. This would be adorable in a fairy tale themed card, I think, with that uh, gingerbread uh, detail on the roof. And you can add some, add some of that gingerbread type detail with the extra pieces that are included. I am going to have just three windows on this, and I actually really like the color combo there. But here you can see I switched it up. And what I did was keep these in rainbow order, sort of. And the roof is the color preceding and the door is the color after. Now I've taken all of these uh, houses and I'm going to figure out how to get them lined up on a five by seven card base. And we're just kind of creating a pyramid of houses. Just trying to get this figured out so that the most detail shows and um, that we can fit all of them on the card. So I'm going to carefully line these all up. I'm going to, in the first row, tack the middle house over the top of the two on the sides. And then I'm going to remove that row of three and I'm going to adhere the second row of houses to each other. Now, had hindsight, I would not have put the doors on all of these because you don't see the ones in the top three houses. That's one step I could have avoided. You can see little pieces of coaster blank behind the tips or the top of the roofs for each peak. And that's to help add a little extra dimension and you're going to see that was kind of pointless the way I end up doing this. There are a lot of things I would change about how I did this card, but now you know what not to do. <laughs> so I've got them all adhered into a pyramid. I'm going to add a little glue to those pieces of coaster blank so that they are adhered to the rest of the panel. And now I'm going to... Um, show you where things went a little I mean the finished product is great but um, I used this frame from the Wisp of Windows Deco Blooms has the same size and style so it doesn't matter which one of those you have and I die cut a white panel I like those rounded corners and I wanted a nice clean edge all the way around in hindsight I would have just cut the panel out uh, with my scissors or with a guillotine uh, cutter. Oh, and you can see a little bit of that gingerbread detail was getting pulled up, so I just adhered that again with some little dabs of glue. On that panel we die cut uh, from the rounded corner panel, I am using a sun rays type stencil to add some detail behind the houses. It was a little too stark with just the white background. So I am using some scattered straw and wild honey distress oxide to ink up some sun rays behind them. And I did die cut this panel that we had glued together with the same die. So I'll be able to just lay it right over the top, have the rounded corners matching, and everything is all die cut together. <clears throat> But it does squish all of the dimension out of those houses. Say, <laughs> so let me go with it. I put some coaster blank on the back of that panel, and I am adhering that to this 5x7 card base, which this panel is just a smidgen. It's like a quarter inch total smaller than the main panel. 
I'm going to pull out the Gold Mix Color Essential Gems. I can't believe I have any of these left because I've been using the heck out of them. And I'm using the second from smallest gem to add the doorknobs. I just thought that was the perfect sparkle. And I love the pretty antique doorknobs that have the crystal look to them. I'm also adding the tiniest gems to the peak in that little spot that seems made specifically for embellishment. And they fit in here perfectly. So there's one in each of those peaks and we're almost done. I really wanted a sentiment on this, but neither welcome nor um, you are my home seemed to fit. So I dug through my stash and I thought I'd stick with the Spellbinders kits. And we're using this April kit to create the sentiment for the <clears throat> front of the card. And it says, um, oh, what does it say? You bring the sunshine. And it fits in the circle from the June 2021 large die of the month. If you're a subscriber to any of the value packages, or maybe you get the total bundle or the total total package, that's what it's called, um, you probably already have all of these things in your stash. And I think the stamp sets... From the kit of card kit of the month, get neglected. And this one has some really, really fun sentiments. I think this goes perfectly with these bright and fun houses and the sun rays coming up over the back of the houses. And it fits perfectly in this circle. So I'm going to die cut that quick after I heat embossed it in gold embossing powder. And we will use a little bit of coaster blank to adhere that to the front of the card. Also, that's one of my favorite ways to add dimension is just with some coaster blank and layers of cardstock would do the same thing. I know a lot of people are using their scraps that way. Now we're going to use the May 2021 card of the month kit, card kit of the month stamp set to add another sentiment. But first, we're gonna add some of these sun rays to the inside. This is uh, one of my favorite ways to keep a stencil in place now. I flip my original Misty over and I put a piece of scratch paper on that to protect the surface and uh, use the magnets to hold my stencils in place. You can buy a magnet surface to do this or use what you already have. I, I love finding another purpose for something I already own. And I'm again using the wild honey and the scattered straw to add some sun rays to the inside of the card. I really like to bring details from the front of the card to the inside of the card to bring it all together. I also like to decorate the envelopes, but I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> I am adding an, that sentiment that we pulled from the other stamp set, wishing you sunny skies and happy days or something to that effect. Um, to the inside, I thought that really coordinated well with the whole sentiment of this card. I hope you enjoyed this video and could come up with some more additional ways to use the APG of the month. It is packed with details and fun things. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and do that now. Give me a like. And if you're interested in any of the products I use today, check the description box below for the list of links. Until next time, bye-bye.